Thanks for clicking on Total Harmonic Distortion channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Motu M4 audio interface. Well, I never intended to do any content on audio interfaces. I noticed something odd with this one, so I figured I'd bring it to the attention of my viewers. First off, uh, we're hooked up to my MacBook Pro here through a USB-C connector. So it's just basically a USB-C to USB-C connector directly into the interface. Uh, I am powered uh, in the back, but uh, it doesn't really matter whether it's powered or not. I get the same result. Um, first, I'm going to drop the gain down on channels 1 and channels 2, and we'll see that they get quite a bit cleaner. And it's, it's quite normal for the, uh, for the noise to go up when you increase the, the preamp gain, so that's really not an issue. So yellow is fine. That's what I would expect. Um, but if you cook up orange, which is channel number two, you can see there's quite a bit of high frequency here, um, around 60, 70 K. And that's a noise that's being transferred through the audio interface. Um, let's hook up some cables so we can take a look at this a little bit closer. A little longer break than expected because I found something I didn't expect. When I switched over to MLS, I didn't get a nice flat response. Uh, I got this. Um, it looks like the impulse response is good and a little goofy, and I really can't explain this. Um, this is the first time I used this particular cable. It uh, looks like a thick uh, Thunderbolt cable, but let's switch over to this uh, USB, USB-C, USB-C cable and see what happens. Okay, we'll switch over to MLS, and you can see uh, with this, the MLS is nice and flat. So now that we're using this different cable, let's make sure that we still see the noise on the system. And in order to see the noise, we have to change this, the range to this, so we can see it, and kick the sampling rate up. And finally, we got to enable channels 2 and channel 1. As you can see, uh, using this cable, we also get uh, the noise at the high frequency. Let's try one more USB cable. This one is a USB-C to USB-A cable, but I have a dongle to turn it into USB-C to USB-C cable. So let's try that. With this cable, you can see the MLS looks nice and flat. Um, and we'll take a look at the noise floor. Now using this particular cable, it looks like the interface performs quite well. Um, it really depends on which cable you use. If you use a, if you use a Thunderbolt cable, you'll get the worst performance. Uh, you'll, and if you use this USB-C to USB-C cable, you'll get okay performance. But using the USB-C to USB-A cable, you get the best performance, which seems really odd for an audio interface. Now, as there's no barrel jack and there's no other way of, of powering this interface other than USB-C, you don't really have a lot of options here. Anyways, let's switch to a different cable so we can explore this further. Okay, I swapped over to the worst cable, the uh, Thunderbolt cable, and let's see what it looks like when we just run the sine wave into this thing. As you can see, the sine wave gets pretty glitchy, and there's quite a bit of noise on the noise floor. Um, that's all due to these glitches. I have no idea why this cable glitches like this, but let's try a different cable. Okay. It looks like the uh, USB, USB-C cable is, is a lot more steady. Um, that's what I would expect to see on this particular interface. I have no idea why this Thunderbolt cable is so horrible with this interface, but it really is. Anyways, um, let's uh, take a look at uh, the other two channels here. So I gotta hook up some cables. The channels 1 and 2 hooked up, uh, I can enable them on their loopback. And you can see they're doing quite well too. Let's take a look at that noise floor a little bit further on this. Um, we'll turn it around and we'll turn off channels 3 and 4. But anyways, what I'm really interested in is this little bit of noise right here on the bottom and how it affects the actual signal. Okay, it looks like uh, it's just noise on the noise floor. It doesn't really do much of anything else. All right. So it could be worse. Uh, this could cause all kinds of harmonics to go back and forth. So 
but it's still it still has quite a bit more noise compared to channels the other channel channel one another issue i noticed with this interface has to do with the input monitor mix the input monitor mix uh, is, is typically an analog circuit but in this one's a digital circuit so what happens is you get a bit of a latency when you turn it on and also if you put it in the middle you end up creating a comb filter effect, uh, which you can see here on the orange. Um, this is very unusual. Most uh, monitor mixes are analog because uh, they want as low latency as possible. Finally, let's talk about the impulse response itself. This is an impulse response typical of an IAR half band filter. Now, there's also something called an FIR half band filter, which will look more like a sync function. The reason why I'd use an IR half path filter is to reduce latency. Uh, you'll, you'll get the signal up a little bit faster compared to a sync function, which requires a little bit more delay. But the disadvantage of using an IR half path filter is the phase response. The phase response will not be flat at the higher frequencies, so you can't really use it for test and measurement. So in my case, it, it makes more sense for me to have a sync function for testing uh, guitar pedals, but that's just my use case. If you're really looking for the lowest latency, then you'll probably want an IAR half pan filter. To sum up what I learned in this video, the Mo 2 M4 audio interface can perform quite well depending on which cable you plug in. It's very sensitive to USB cable, and there's no way of hooking up any other power into the thing because there's no barrel jack. So, given that, I cannot recommend this interface. Anyways, well, thanks for watching and please subscribe.